Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program uh, with you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this broadcast. Uh, you can pick up your phone, dial the number 281-837-2222. If you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we would love to give you book, chapter, verse of all your Bible questions, listen to any reasonable comments you'd like to make as well. I want to read down here in verses 20 through 25 as we're going to deal with the subject this afternoon, physical and spiritual adultery. Physical and spiritual adultery. After I read this, Brother Javier is going to come to the mic. Uh, he's going to make a few points about our subject and discuss some other things that are pertinent to the conversation we're going to have uh, this afternoon from God's Word. In Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 20, the Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble, and the flame consumed the shaft, so their root shall be as a rottenness, and their blossoms shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he had stretched forth his hand against them, and had smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. I've read Isaiah chapter 5, and I've read into you here in verses 20 through verse number 25, and as I already mentioned, our subject matter this afternoon is physical and spiritual adultery. Now, if you have a question you'd like to ask and a comment you'd like to make, uh, the number is 281-837-2222. At this time, I'll turn it to a gospel preacher, Brother uh, Javier Frias. Brother Javier. Right, God bless you, God Brother bless Henry. You, Brother. Thank you for that reading as well. <clears throat> Audience, we just pray that you, before this life is over, get in line with what thus saith the Lord. Amen. We as well are to give heed to what thus saith the Lord. Through the scriptures, there's many tongues, many words that go about in this world. They speak things throughout history, and men get, give heed to them. But the most important thing is the divine word that came down from heaven, where prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. Amen. This is important because we will all be judged individually by this word. Those under the Old Testament in Moses' law. And then those in the New Testament by the law of liberty, which is the law that Jesus died for in Ezekiel chapter number 16. Ezekiel chapter number 16, verse 32. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband, they give gifts to all whores. But thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers. And hirest them that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. And the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms. Whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward. And no reward is given unto thee. Therefore thou art contrary. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out. And thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and with all the idols of thy abominations. And by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. We know Manasseh offered up his children, his children to the fire. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure. And all them that thou hast loved with all them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about thee. Against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. And I will give thee blood and fury and jealousy. God's wrath and anger is going to be unleashed in Ezekiel 16. He mentioned in verse 26 that she fornicated. With the Egyptians. Verse 27. The daughters of the Philistines. Verse 28. Played whore with the Assyrians. Verse 29. 
fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea. There's different deities that are false that they were given allegiance to. And so when it comes to God, God is Israel or Jerusalem's husband. And they are to give spiritual connection or there's a spiritual relationship between his wife, which is Jerusalem, and himself. But they went out just like a man, a man that cheats on his wife. See, they took a vow to be faithful one to another until death do, do them part. That's right. And so when they go out of wedlock and they sleep with another woman, they fornicate, they get divorced, adultery is committed. When it comes to Ephesians chapter number 5, Ephesians chapter number 5, we read concerning Christ and concerning his kingdom. Looking at verse number 24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So are men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loved himself, for no man yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. They too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, when it comes to the bride of Christ, she is the church of Christ. And when it comes to today, there's spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery, and physical adultery. And many of you will say, well, that's wrong that he cheated on his wife. We all come to that understanding, even if it's your own relative. If your relative cheats on his spouse and you hear of it, you also know, well, he's my relative, but I know that that's still wrong. But you'll not do that in a spiritual sense because Jesus has one wife. And you will not say that it's wrong if one connects or has fellowship with a woman that is not his wife, like the Baptist, Presbyterian, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons. You'll say that that's nothing wrong with that. But God has a problem with it because that is not the bride of Christ. Amen. And so for those in the bride of Christ to go and leave and embark and do the worship that is of another woman is adultery, it's spiritual adultery. That's right. You're cheating on God. You're cheating on Christ by accepting a lie. Amen. And Romans, looking at verse 23, and change, they became fools, change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. In the Old Testament, there was a multitude of deities that had images of bulls and goats and fishes, and they worshipped them. And they believed that these images were either in the sea or in the sky and the heavens. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed, that's that word again, changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. We are to worship and serve the creator more than the creature. Amen. We serve the creature by teaching it truth, teaching the world truth. Verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change, there goes that word again, the natural use into that which is against nature. So women with women, again, this is a month they call Pride Month, and the Bible teaches us that that is spiritual adultery. That is against nature itself. That is against what is normal? The image has been changed and altered. Verse 27, likewise also the men, leaving uh, the natural use of the woman, burn in their own lusts one toward another. Men with men, 
working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense of their error which was me. If you hear of a man that fornicates with a woman, you recognize that that's a sin. If you hear that a man slept with a man, you recognize that that's a sin and that's a sin against nature. Amen. The first one sinned, but it wasn't against nature. Amen. Because he sinned with a woman. Now, if he goes with an animal, that's also against nature. Again, with a child, that's against nature. Man. Verse number 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers about us as backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, with covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This is also an image against nature. This is also spiritual adultery. Because what you're doing is you're embracing the image and character of, of Satan. This is not the character that comes from the Spirit of Christ. And what we're doing on this broadcast is reading the scriptures so you can align your heart to ask the question, am I doing or am I changing the image of God and what God wants me to think on and embrace? Am I changing it or am I embracing it? In John chapter 8 verse 44, verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a bow not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The lust of your father ye will do. Do you do the lust of your father? Do you do what Romans chapter 1 mentions concerning women with women, men with men? That's the lust of your father the devil. Amen. Are you uh, malicious, disobedient to parent, envy, backbiter? That's the lust of your father, the devil. And God desires that you read the scriptures and align yourself with the truth. Jesus has one bride, the lamb's wife. Revelation talks about her as the lamb's wife. And to be added to that one body, Jesus desires that you obey his commandment. He said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He mentioned, go, go ye therefore, in Matthew chapter 28. Teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. To be saved, to have received the Holy Spirit, you must be born again in that one body that's in the scriptures. And it's still here for us today. If you desire salvation, please call in, ask questions, because there still is that one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. It hasn't changed from the New Testament. And understand that you're committing spiritual adultery. Even if you're faithful to your wife. That's right. We've been married 50 years, 40 years. I haven't cheated on my wife since with my husband. But you're committing spiritual adultery by going with a woman that is like a whore, like a prostitute. That is not the bride of Christ. That's where you're going to have a problem at the judgment. Because you haven't been added to the number Acts 2.47 and the Lord added to the church those that should be saved. We pray you take heed. We pray you have understanding. If you don't, please call in. We'll answer your questions. 281-827-2222. Well, thank you, Brother Javier, for uh, laying the foundation on my subject. Yes. Brothers and sisters and radio listeners, I hope you understood and heard the word that Javier uh, used over and over again in his uh, discourse uh, just a few moments ago. And that's the word image. Image. Marriage is supposed to represent an image. God talks about sexual relationship. Uh, he talks about adultery, physical and spiritual adultery throughout the Bible because marriage is supposed to be the cornerstone of society. When you go back 
back to uh, to Ephesians chapter 5. I want to just share this with you real quick. In this context, Paul is talking about marriage, but then he, he kind of shifts gears, if you notice here, in verse 32. Now, however, you just read it. He uses marital language to, to show the relationship that the bride of Christ, which is the church, has with their husband, which is which is, which is is Christ, okay? And so we, we, we see here, we're the bride. And so when you look at verse number 30, he says, in Ephesians 5, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, that's marriage language, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. He goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. Now look at this. He said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning, this is this, Christ and the church. Let me tell you some images matter, brothers and sisters. Right. Uh, images matter. Images or can be your idol, depending on that image uh, that you are, uh, or the perception you have of an image in your life. Nobody looks at Spider-Man and say that's Batman, unless something's wrong with it. There's an image. Okay, nobody look at the Roadrunner and say that's a coyote. The idea is the image is supposed to represent uh, the, the created or the thing that created it, okay? And so I bring that up because we live in a society brothers and sisters, where the devil is trying, and he's doing a good job, mind you, of destroying the image that God wants you and I to keep in our mind when it comes to a male and a female. I thought we would never have to come to such a, a foolish uh, discussion uh, with our children about what's a man and what's a woman. But unfortunately, we got people today, as Javier mentioned, Gay Pride Month, who are waving a flag in God's face and think that they're going to get away with it if they do not repent. And let me tell you something. God knows what a male is and what a female is. Now, you're gonna this month, many of you are gonna be talking to your, your friends who are transgender. I mean, I'm telling you, they got so many alphabets. Uh, listen to this. I want to I want to just read some of this. All these alphabets to destroy the image of a male and a female. And listen to this, what they got uh today. And I'm sure this isn't an exhaustive list. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, transgender, transsexual, queer, questioning intersex, intergender, and asexual, and I'm sure there's other elemental P added to what I just said here in these in these in these uh in this discourse. Brothers and sisters and realists, let me tell you something. When God created human beings, God created them male and female. Go to Matthew chapter 9, because you're gonna have people say, well, Jesus doesn't say anything about uh Jesus didn't talk against homosexuality. Yes he does. Yes, he does. And we're going to prove it. And he speaks against bestiality. Oh, yes, he does. And we're going to prove it. Because those of you who are going to these jobs, working in human resources, and going to these jobs and eating the cake because you're afraid uh, to stand up and say what needs to say to your co-workers and to some of you in your own family, you're afraid to say anything. Let me tell you something. Their blood is going to be on your hand. Now, nobody's talking about you, you don't do it with love. Nobody said that. Nobody said that we do it. We say we say things hatefully. But what I am do, am saying is you need to speak up against these gay pride uh, communities and let them know that it's a sin in the eyes of God. And God has made a man a man and a woman a woman. And that's what he made them. Now, in Matthew chapter 19, look with me in verse number four. And he answered and said unto them. Have you not read? That's the problem. A lot of you are not reading your Bible. It's Javier mm -hmm. brought up. That's the problem. You think the truth is discovered inside yourself. It's discovered in God's word. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, this is why he made them, made them male and female. That Y'all see that? He made them male and and female, and he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, a man to a woman, and the twain shall be one flesh. That's the image that God wants displayed. Amen. Let me tell you something. God is against, and always have been, against cross-dressing. There is a difference between man's clothes and women's clothes. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Amen. I know I know a lot of, I'm talking in the church, a lot of people and saints in the church are participating and practicing uh, uh, homosexuality. They are giving in to it. Uh, in the Church of Christ. Some of you are, are setting up the floats, might be painting the floats uh, in the Church of Christ. I'm going to tell you something. You better repent of that, brothers and sisters, in the church. Going to these uh, the, the, these these hairdressers that you know are gay. Nothing wrong with going to them. But my question
question is, are you saying something to them? Girl, he can do girl, girl, he can do hair real good. He do my nails real good. Yeah, but I'm okay, he may do uh real good. And they deserve a job. Amen. I'm glad they're working. They should be able to work. But my thing is, are you telling them they need to really uh look at the scriptures and know that how they're dressing is wrong? That's what you need to make sure you're speaking up and not taking pictures with them and pasting it all over Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5, the woman, listen, God's word, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Did you know God knew there's a difference between women clothing and men clothing? Did you, did you all know that? That God know there is a difference between a woman's clothes and men's clothes. It's amazing. We got to deal with transgender and got to teach our kids about public restrooms because you got a man that feels like a woman and now he can just walk into a, a woman's restroom. Ridiculous. Why, what is this world coming to? Amen. A bunch of foolishness is what it's come to. And we, it, is a, it is an abomination and always has been in the sight of God. Marriage is between a male and a female. And a man needs to look like a man. And a woman needs to look like a woman. Why? Because that's the image mm -hmm. that God has set up for people to see. God is masculine. God made you a male. God has never left it up to you or I to choose our gender. And when you are trying to choose your gender, let me tell you what you're doing, radio listeners and friends. You are fighting against God. Amen. And you're becoming a friend of the world. James chapter 4. James 4. And I'm going to talk to Brother, uh, Brother Ozan. Go to James chapter 4. We'll take the call. In James chapter 4, I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. We, can't, we cannot give in to this worldly system. In James chapter 4 and verse number 4. Mm -hmm. Listen what James says here. You adulterers and adulteresses. You see this? Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoso therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are going out there and practicing and participating in this gay parade that they're having all across our country, and we wonder why our country can't fix itself. because And we're always talking about God bless America. Well, how about America blessing God mm -hmm. by living right? And by living by the rules that when the president and all those in authority put their hand on the book, the Bible, I'm just wondering why they put it on the Bible if you're not going to live the Bible. Amen. If you're not going to make rules and laws uh, based upon the God of the Bible. And so Paul, uh, Solomon didn't get it wrong in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. That's exactly what it does. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. And we've got to make sure, Pam, I'm talking to Church of Christ before I take this call. You make sure you're spending time teaching your children about how they, if they're a male, how they need to act like a male and dress like a male. If they're a woman, they need to be a woman and act like a woman and be who God have made them to be. That's the image that God has made them to represent in this world. And God help us to live it out. 281-837-2222 at this time, Brother Stephen Ozan. Amen. Thank you, Henry Javier. God bless you both. Thank you all for listening. I'm just going to share a few thoughts. You know, uh, audience, you have to understand something. You do not have the authority to tell the righteous to cease from teaching the truth. Daniel is clear. The kingdom would not be left to other people. It is left to the saints of God to teach the truth. We're not concerned whether the White House, the outhouse, or your house teaches truth. Amen. We're concerned the saints of God should teach the truth. Mm. And that's what needs to happen in every church of Christ. Don't point at the denomination where we already know their laws. They've been condemned. First Corinthians chapter 5. We're dealing with the righteous. The house of God, you should be speaking concerning these things. Now, if you will, <clears throat> excuse me, let us look at the book of Leviticus. And we look at the book of Leviticus. What we want to try to find is an understanding here. Sometimes people will say, well, you guys cherry pick uh, from the word of God and you all will go to the Old Testament to try and find your point. I want to share something with you. Leviticus 18.22. Watch what it says. I shall not lie with mankind as a woman can. It is 
and abom oh, it is abomination. Now you think that's why we teach it. See, that's what these guys online, these women teaching about the Torah. And you are no more following the teachings of Moses than anyone, because if you were, you would know you should be listening to Christ, as he said, God will raise a prophet like unto me. And that if you don't listen to him, you'd be cut off from the people. You're not following any of Moses. And that's what Jesus told them. Because you would love Christ. And you wouldn't speak against him. But I'm going to tell you why we teach this. Because it's in the New Testament. We're ministers of the New Testament, not the letter. Because the letter killed us. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You want to try to tie us down to the Old Testament as if we don't know what to teach. But we got this. In the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, and look at, if you will, verse number 9. Now watch this long list. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. You know who hates the adulterer? The one who gets left behind. See, the one who gets left behind and put aside, and get left in a marriage and didn't do anything wrong, they know what adultery is when they go and marry, and they know the one that went married is an adulterer. And see, you have a problem with that, especially when women get left behind. But see, you a man in this world. Wait a minute. No, effeminate. Now, that's the calamite, the boy lover. You have to point fingers more than that, just Catholic priests that have been found doing that. That's people may be in your own family that did this. You have to understand something. You're not to touch children in that fashion. So this is in the scripture. Now we'll get excited about that. Put the person picture all over. And they should be put all over if they've done that. Now Brother Fred said if you do it spiritually, how would you respond if God put your picture all over and shine on the highest magnitude a uh, big screen of fire and say, this one has slept with denominationalism. See, and it should be done, but because of God's mercy, he doesn't. But you can not point fingers at the effeminate and not point fingers at yourself for sleeping with the devil when you're supposed to be the bride of Christ. No abuse of himself with mankind. When you take your body and abuse it with mankind, whether it be homosexuality, touching yourself, all the things, inordinate affection. Affection, as Brother Frias and Henry has taught, is not of nature. Let me explain something to you. We don't care what Hollywood shows you. You have to get the opposite sex and tell them touch you. You get it? And put a ring on the finger before you do. Okay? Amen. And make sure it's not just a ring you bought. Put some paper with it so it'll be right before God and man. And then you will have all the pleasure you're supposed to. Now, that's plain language that wouldn't even offend a child. But when you touch yourself, you have to understand you have violated the laws of God. Your affection is not of nature. It is in order. It goes against nature. It is vile. And you're going to have to understand. But now you have a problem. You have a problem with the next verse 10. Not thieves, not covetous. See, people that steal your stuff. You come out the store and your car is on four concrete blocks. Oh, you looking for the police. You cry out on the Lord Jesus for help. You speaking about you just came from church and everything was fine. Yeah, but see, hey, he don't want to be labeled hellbound either. The drunkard. Some of you are drunkards. Revile as you mock and speak against that which is right. No extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But look at the hope of the saints. And such was some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the Spirit of our God. And brethren, you need to rise up to these also adulterers and adulteresses in the church that want to side with Satan on doctrine when it comes to say that you can't be forgiven of all these sins. Yes, yes you can be forgiven of these Amen. sins. You know, Paul killed people and never went to jail. God may not want you to go to jail for what you've done, but he's going to take you through some testing to see if you're right, like he did Paul. He didn't go to jail for those murders, but he went to jail for teaching truth. And you may be reprimanded by man for teaching truth, but you have to be strong enough to endure the reprimand because hell is much more severe. Amen. Remember that. I want to encourage you. We know you've been listening. You have to understand, not only is homosexuality wrong, so is adultery, fornication. A man with a woman, as Brother Frias has taught, and you're not married, yes. is just as grievous. The problem is, some of you that do those things, you don't have the strength to tell the homosexual is wrong because your life is living in shambles too. But if you come to God and get baptized into Christ, the Lord will bless you. Don't do like Junior says, it's a new day, baby. No, it's the same day, baby, the same day. And God will punish us all 
with the same reprimand of hell's fire for violating these commandments without repentance. You want to remember Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salute you. And you just said it all with love yes. and that Amen. you could probably yes. say it with, brother. They don't get it. That's all. Yeah, that, that's all that's you can it. do, that's brother. All we can do. Plan Tell the, the scriptures brother. because, you know, like I say, when somebody starts killing people, yeah. everybody's excited. They're yeah. all on the news. Yeah. <clears throat> everybody's looking around at movie stars that get caught doing certain things. Yeah. But the individuals that do different things, you think because you didn't get caught, it's okay. As Brother Fred said, if you've even thought it, yeah. You're still going to stand at the jump. It doesn't matter if anybody heard you or saw you. If you just thought it and never touched anything, God's going to punish you. Matthew 5 is clear. Mm -hmm. If you think on your neighbor's wife mm -hmm. to lust for her, that is the same thing. Mm -hmm. So how do you clear your mind? You have to turn to God and ask him to purify your mind. Right. As David said, when I'm at home, my thoughts will be toward God. It will not veer off from the truth. You have to ask God to help you do that. And David needs that help too. Because his yeah. mind veered off into Bathsheba. It got him in a whole yes. lot of mess. Amen. It will do the same for you. Amen. You cannot prove scripture that a child is born homosexual. He may want to be that, but Matt, uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 29 says God makes him upright. Amen. Now, when he decides that he's coming out there one way he want to do, he looks for an invention to carry it out. Right. But you're not going to ever prove scripturally that a person is born homosexual. And within your own homosexual community, you know I'm telling the truth, USA Today did a story on you all in battle to say, I'm born that way. And the other group of y'all says, I decided to be that Amen. way. So you can exercise your pride. I'm proud to be this. The other one is saying, I can't help it. I'm born that way. But I'm telling you now, a calamite is going to be cursed into hell as Amen. well as men who lay with men and women who lay with women. And if you wear Amen. the coals of the opposite gender. And as Henry pointed out, you know why it's not the textile mill that decided we should separate coals from men and women? It's God that decides. Exactly. It don't care whether it's pink, blue, whatever. Yeah. They're trying to teach you there's a difference in men and women. I understand colors can be mixed, but the design of the clothing is the homosexual. He wants to wear it. Right. Or she to show I'm um, trying to look like a man, on, and that's why I picked stuff because if everybody was uh, neutral, you wouldn't know what he can't show his pride. She can't show her pride, so she wants to wear the clothes of a man. And right. make sure that's why it's done that way. And you and all the community know, and you head ourselves need to wake up. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Christian. He gonna die? Is he gonna possibly show what he is if he can't no identify? Right, exactly. It's an he image, brother. You gotta show the image. That's yeah. What, I mean, that, that's an image. It definitely, man. Yeah. You to, the power is in the image you show. Yeah. That's what the power I don't know what they're doing, man. It's they, an idol. It would be a discouragement if right. all the clothes would become neutral. <laughs> he couldn't show I'm switching. He's prideful of her. She's prideful. But at the end, there'll be no joy in that. Nope. And see, that's a sin. That's an anger with God because he made yeah, you a woman. Exactly. You can have all the pleasures of life because he made you a man. You just need to pick the appropriate gender, which is the opposite of yours, and marry. And all the joys of your heart can be fulfilled. Amen. But you don't want to do that because that's God's plan also, marriage. Amen. Amen. Amen.